Dracula Visions panel for Fan Expo 2021. I'm your host, Eric Anthony. I host a podcast called The Cave of Solitude. But for this panel, I'm joined by publishers and artists. We're going to start over here. Right in front of me is my good friend, Martin Slam Duncan, the publisher of Dracula Visions. Give it up for Martin. Hey guys, thanks for, uh, thanks for coming out. Who was over here before, she disappeared like a vampire, was Becca Kinsey, but she'll be back. Here she comes. Round of applause for Becca. Woo! We're on to make another entrance. Becca. <laughs> Over here is Jonathan Kuchima. Did I say your name right? Wallace. Yes. Oh, yeah. First time. How'd you, how'd you know? I did my research. What can I say? And last but not least, Mr. Ron Sutton. All right, everybody. So Dracula Visions, Martin. This is your uh, this is your vision, your idea. Tell everybody a little bit of the history of this book that you put together, or helped put together with all of these wonderful artists here. So we only got half an hour, right? We got half hour. All right, all right. <laughs> yeah, so Dracula Visions. Um, first and foremost, um, I'm a huge fanboy. I love comic books, and I've grown up with them. Uh, I also love horror. And um, the idea behind Dracula Visions is we wanted to really celebrate um, Bram Stoker's Dracula novel. Uh, so going back, not necessarily the films, but the actual novel itself. And we also wanted to celebrate art. So what I wanted to do is pull in a bunch of different eclectic artists um, and get their quote unquote vision of, of uh, the Dracula novel. So we wanted to pull it all together. We had about 27 artists on this project and they all took various parts of the book. So we took out uh, very key um, quotes from the book and we asked the artist and said, you know, what, what does this quote mean to you? How does this inspire you? Um, and then some of them really jumped on a few quotes right away because they knew exactly what they wanted to draw. Especially the gentleman right on the end, Mr. Ron Sutton. He jumped on his and he was, he was territorial about his quote. So, um, so yeah, so that's sort of the idea. So right now it's on Kickstarter. Uh, you can go right now, um, Mr. Sam Noir, the, the person right there, will be handing out uh, a few little uh, art pieces that you can get signed by some of the artists. There's a little QR code on that, and you can just hit that and you can check out Dracula Visions. One other thing I wanted to mention, sorry, I know I'm, I'm monopolizing this. One other thing I wanted to mention is um, we are going to be giving four pieces of original art away today. Um, but the only caveat is you would need to be a backer of Dracula Visions. So just come up after. Uh, again, it doesn't matter what level, it doesn't matter, but we have some really great artists and really great art to give away today. So Martin, you said that, well, on the screen here, we see some of the art pieces that are gonna be featured in the book. Do you have the Kickstarter video that you wanted to show us to kind of give everybody an idea what the project is all about? I certainly do. So before I play this video, I just wanted to let you know, um, so Dracula the novel is actually a, a public IP, but I wanted to go back to the original author. So I wanted to talk to uh, any of the folks that were involved. So Dacre Stoker, who is the great grand uh, nephew of Bram Stoker who wrote Dracula, uh, was kind enough to do a forward for the book and also kind enough to do the video for the Kickstarter. So I thought we'd play it here. Um, there might be a little delay just because of the things, but you'll get the idea. It's very quick. We have no audio. Technical difficulties are happening in all kinds of shapes and forms. Sorry, guys. But you can see the artwork from it to give you a real taste of what you can find in this book. Some of it is uh, rated R? No, no, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> we, we Everyone's those, good. Yeah, we pulled those pieces uh, for today. But there are some um, mature pieces in the book, but uh, we're not going to be showing those here. Um, 
But uh, yeah, if, if a lot more information on the Kickstarter page and you'll see some of those mature pieces as well. So this is, what's really interesting is that with something like Dracula, which is a public domain character, there's so many different things you, anyone could basically write a Dracula story if they wanted to, or a take on it. But you went directly to the estate and so for people who are Dracula fans, this is as official as it could get in many ways because the Stoker estate is giving them a thumbs up for this project, which is incredible. What was it like dealing with Dr. Stro uh, Stoker? Uh, first of all, he was, he was fantastic. Uh, we did it all through emails. <laughs> so I just uh, reached out to him and, and I said, hey, we, wanna, we didn't want to do a celebration of your great-grandfather's work. And uh, I showed him a couple of the art pieces and I, I wanted to show him that we were, we were legitimately uh, very serious about this, right? We wanted to do a really quality book. And he said, sure, yeah, I'll, I'll do a forward. Uh, so I expected maybe like a paragraph and he wrote like a whole page uh, talking about his grandfather. So he's a, um, he does a lot of lectures and so on. He's, he's an expert on, on Dracula. Uh, and in addition, uh, unfortunately we couldn't hear it, but he also did the video, but uh, you, you could see that on the Kickstarter page as well. But uh, super happy to have him on board. Um, there's, a, there's a legitimate, as you said, connection between the, the Stoker family and this project. Yeah, that's awesome. To, to get the backing from the estate of, of Bram Stoker. So for the artists that you picked, some of them that are up here, I'm going to ask you guys now. I know you're all drawing and you're busy, but I want to get your take on what your background with Dracula was. If you had any sort of idea in your head of how you wanted to render or how you always saw Dracula in the fictional context. Uh, let's start with Jason. Oh, John, John, sorry. <laughs> That's the last thing. Yeah. Well, okay, so I, I, was, I was on this project uh, way, uh, way later on everything. Uh, me, I think, my, my, so I did the middle piece there. Uh, my, um, my approach was trying to basically like pretend all the ghosts didn't exist, pretend all the universal, the universal incarnation of vampire uh, Dracula didn't exist and try to see, like, from what the reading was, what could I adapt from that, from that thing as well, too. And so that, that's kind of the best way I can describe it in that way. It was, kind of, it was a cool challenge. Yeah. Something that you had to overcome to not draw Dracula like that in order to get this right? Well, the thing, yeah, so the thing I had to overcome was, uh, again, is like the, uh, trying to like, uh, create like a, like the, like the certain tropes from like the old, the old con from the old movies and stuff. Uh, and, and again, it, what's kind of cool is that in this whole process, you start seeing the commonalities and stuff of like, you know, what different adaptations have taken from it. I mean, like even with the, um, the, the, the Prince of Blue uh, adaptation of uh, Dracula, it's kind of cool. You, you kind of see like, oh, that, that's, that's the one commonality with this thing, or that's the cool thing. Um, the, the funny part about this whole thing was the result was, the, the end result was, oh, it's a Dracula with a mustache. That's the, the facial hair. Dracula with a mustache. Yeah, yes. that's, 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 OG, that's OG Dracula. Yeah. Uh. Um, one the one little thing I want to talk about is actually yeah. a funny story. Uh, when it, <laughs> sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it. Go ahead. Uh, so uh, when I brought Jonathan on again, it was a little later in the project. Uh, he was kind enough uh, to put some time aside to do his piece. By the way, um, the three pieces that you see up on the board are uh, done by the three artists here. So we have uh, Becca Kenzie's right there on the left. Uh, we have Jonathan in the center, uh, and we have Ron's on the far right. Um, but when I brought Jonathan on, sometimes you're so close to a project, you forget what you've told people already. And for some reason, I felt that everybody was sort of in the know of what this, you know, what the vision of this, uh, what this project was. So I brought I brought Jonathan on, and I said, "Hey, you know, you have any idea of what you want to draw?" And he's like, "Yeah, I think I want to do uh, Batman vampire." <laughs> I said, uh, not quite what we're looking for, <laughs> but, but yeah, uh, but yeah, I had, to, I had to go back and explain it to him, but it's like, okay, we, we got it, but you nailed it, you nailed it. <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll show people what the, the Batman vampire you got going on right now. Oh, he's trying it now, he's, he's got to get that, vampire, that Batman vampire out of him. Out of his system, yeah. Uh, how about for you, Becca? What, uh, history do you have with the character of Dracula? Was it a challenge that you w willingly accepted? Like, I want to take this on and I know exactly what I'm going to do? 
Yeah, I took it more as a challenge because my experience with vampire fiction has been stuff like uh, Blade and various anime, like, um, yeah, Vampire Hunter. <laughs> my mind just blanked out right there. And other, um, and Blood, The Last Vampire, like stuff I grew up like as a teenager. And um, I, I kind of knew the story beats of Dracula, but um, not the whole thing. And then finally, uh, when I, I used to work in the library and um, I came across uh, Dracula. It was an abridged version, but it was full of illustrations and the history of the story, including um, um, Vlad the Impaler. So that, I was drawn into it immediately. And so when Martin asked to be interested, I said, yes, yes, I want to be part of this. So how about you, Ron? If I'm, if I'm correct, there's numerous covers for the, the book, right? You've got one from Adam Gorham. Yeah, so we have two covers. Yep. Uh, so the one that I showed right at the beginning, that's Adam Gorham. We have um, uh, a colorized version, and then we have a um, <clears throat> one without any dressing on it, and it's the black and white, because we found that the black and white one was so stunning, we wanted to put that as, out as well. Sure. And then the hard cover that we're also doing will be from uh, Ramon Perez. Okay, there you go. So the piece that you did, I feel like I've been seeing Ron Sutton's piece everywhere in the advertising of, of the drag. So you clearly hit it out of the park. What's your history with, with horror art or horror comics? Well, I've uh, drawn quite a number of horror comics over the years. I mean, the main thing I'm known for is I spent nine years drawing the Elvira Mistress of the Dark comic book for Claypool. So <laughs> I drew almost 50 issues of Elvira. And I've since done all sorts of uh, horror stuff, including uh, adapting uh, Edgar Allan Poe's uh, stories. Um, I actually have done Stoker before. Uh, a couple of years back, I did a full-color rendered uh, adaptation of uh, Dracula's Guest for uh, graphic classics. And that was not just drawing the artwork in pencil and ink, but it was actually doing it in full color, so doing it in magic markers and colored pencils and Dr. Martin's dyes. So, you know, I've done a lot of horror stuff over the years. Something like Dracula, um, everyone kind of has in their mind a visual library of their idea of Dracula. What was it for you when you think of that character? Uh, kind of a combination, because, I mean, I guess the, the Draculas that have really stuck with me over the years are Christopher Lee in the movies, of course, the, doing all the, the Hammer films. Uh, in comic books, I guess the, the Tomb of Dracula that was done for a long, long time by uh, um, Gene Colan and Tom Palmer, which was very beautiful stuff. So I'm trying to com combine a little bit of both of those, and I'm also you know, looking at the novel and trying to combine some aspects of that as well, and trying to come up with something new in the end, so we'll see whether it was successful or not. Well, I, think, I think the piece that you put for this book was, was a success. Now, the good thing about this book is that it's kickstarted. It's reached its goal. It's coming out. Oh yeah, this is happening. So we're, we got fully funded about uh, just over a weekend. Yeah, so there's definitely an appetite for this book, it looks like. So I'm, I'm over, overjoyed about that. And uh, again, thank you anyone who, who did back it already. Uh, you have about another week, uh, week and a half to go if you are interested in it. Um, a lot of cool stretch goals that we're looking at bringing out very soon. Um, so if this does interest you, there, there's there's a level for everybody, right? Like we, we have everything from, just, if you just want to look at the book, a PDF version, all the way up to t-shirts and, and hardcovers and, and, and also 3D models of some of the art pieces. Uh, so we had a modeler, uh, Amanda Daly, uh, work on some of the art pieces, put a 3D model, to, model together. We're printing it out in resin and I'm personally going to be uh, <laughs> painting every single one of them um, that we're selling for this. So uh, I don't know why I took that on, but we're, I'm going to be painting every <laughs> single one of these. Uh, and I'll show you a picture very soon of what that looks like. Yeah, see, that's the good thing is, is that a lot of times people might be trepidatious to fund a Kickstarter if they see that, oh, is it actually going to be funded? They're almost at the end of their, their Kickstarting campaign and it doesn't look like they're going to make it. But for this one, you're going to get this book. So it's worth your while to go on to the Kickstarter and back it, because it's a sure thing that's happening. You've got that uh, certainty. But let's talk about some of the artists featured in the book, because this isn't just some random 
artists that you just found in a, in a school. These are award winners, these are professionals. John, Jonathan's the only one from the school, but he saved the book, right? So <laughs> just for that, he should, he should be top billing. <laughs> That's right. Beside a school, basically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the quick list here. Um, a lot of the artists are actually here today, so you That's can right. go talk to them about the project. Uh, but right off the bat, uh, we have Mar Ramon Perez, as I mentioned, is doing the hardcover. Uh, he's uh, he's a Eisner Award winner uh, um, for a lot of different comics. He's, he's been around for a long time. Uh, we have uh, Eric Vetter, uh, who works for Deadpool, Street Fighter, Death Stalkers. He does a lot of uh, video game work as well. Uh, Kalman Andosovsky. Uh, from Marvel's NYC, No Way Home, Captain Canuck, Adam Gorham, as I said, did the, did the original cover um, from Rocket Raccoon, uh, Hochi Anderson, who did the uh, Martin Luther King uh, adaptation, he's Very also cool. in this, and he's just been signed on to do uh, Marvel's Luke Cage, right. so we got him on here as well. Uh, Andy Belanger, who is also down here, uh, Swamp Thing, Friday the 13th, he's on there as well. Uh, Gerhard, uh, who's known for service, he did the uh, Dracula Castle that I showed a little while before. Uh, of course, Mr. Ron Sutton, Becca Kinsey, uh, Jeff Ursherwood, who's also here this weekend, he's on the book as well. Uh, Mike Ruth is in the book, uh, Sam Agro, um, Neil Vokes who is sort of our Dracula guru. I would say Neil and Ron are Dracula gurus. Uh, Chris Campana, a friend from New Jersey. Um, Tony Moy and Daniel Go Govar, who are amazing painters. They're on this project. Uh, Paul Domenko, who absolutely killed his piece. Actually, I'm gonna go back to that very quickly. Let's, let's show that again. So he did a wide angle version of this. So we actually have a limited amount of the wide angle prints of, of his piece, uh, but he jumped on the, the Dracula Castle uh, crypt right away, and he just, he just knocked it out of the park. Um, Casey Parsons, who's also here this weekend, Katie Sawatsky, uh, Shane Heron, uh, Andrew Dorland, also here this weekend, R.B. White, also here this weekend, um, Mr. Jonathan Kochiba, as we know, uh, Sandy Carruthers, Sean Daly, also here, um, uh, Kyle Smith, uh, Steve McGinnis, Gabe Sapienza, and Mr. Dominic Chenier, who was kind enough to do three extra prints that we'll be giving out, not prints, sorry, original pieces of art, uh, which he, he used as sort of um, templates for his finished piece. So uh, these were all sort of rough pieces before he did the finished piece and he was kind enough to donate these today. So the, we've covered the fact that the book is funded. You've got an all-star lineup of, a, of Marvel, DC professionals that are on the book, which is cool in itself to have everybody in somewhat of an anthology of art. But then you also have the book structured in a very interesting way. Can you explain to us how you structured that book? So it's not just a book of pictures. There's a, a somewhat of a linear way that this book is that you can enjoy it as a coffee table book. Yeah, so um, we didn't set out originally to recreate Dracula. Right. Like it's it's not a recreation. Again, I wanted the artist to be able to just, you know, flex their art muscles, right? And, and just have fun with it. So what we did is, we, again, we took a number of the, the very key uh, quotes from the book and we said, hey, what is, you know, when you, when you read this quote, how does it inspire you? Um, which you could probably ask these artists as well uh, on some of the inspirations, but how does it inspire you? And, um, and then just do something that way. So when we, when we release the book, again, first and foremost, it's an art book. So the, the art page is gonna be uh, a full page. There's not any, gonna be anything on that page but the art. Uh, secondly, we decided, even though it cost a bit more money, to make it oversized. So we wanted to not necessarily make it comic sized, but larger, almost like magazine sized uh, right. pieces. Because we want almost every piece to look like something you could put on a wall. And then on the other side, uh, we're going to have uh, the quote that inspired the piece. 
uh, the artist, and then probably like the medium and what they're using uh, to do it. Because we have a lot of different artists that use different mediums. So some are painters, some are traditional uh, drawers, some people do it in um, digital, right? So we wanted to we wanted to show all the different types of art that we have in there. Yeah, that, that's fantastic. So a lot of people associate Comic Con with superhero characters, but the horror genre is a passionate group of people in and of itself, and there's so many different genres within the horror genre itself. So I want to ask the artists here, what are some of the uh, things within the horror genre that you guys particularly like? I'll ask Mecca first if you want to give us a rundown of what you love about horror. Um, what I love about horror is the imagination that I can use with it, whether I'm reading a piece of fiction comic book or if I'm creating something of my, my own and um, it's also a catharsis if you will like uh, I tend to be drawn to um, psychological horror and you know horror with creatures and the supernatural you know anything that'll get my imagination going do you have a particular um, horror movie television show piece of literature that is like your go-to that you absolutely love um, I tend to go to movies like The Exorcist, um, Psycho is one of my all-time favorite movies, um, Silence of the Lambs is another one, um, just anything that's like, fascinating psychologically and messed up and has a bit of the fantastical to it, like um, Hellraiser too. How, how about for you, Jonathan? Is there Are you a horror fan yourself? Uh, yeah, in fact, I'm actually um, drawing a horror comic right now. Uh, at my table, we're selling. It's called the Fly Trap, and it's a uh, it's like it's it's a it's a cosmic horror uh, book that has body horror, uh, even has like zany elements of like Saturday morning cartoon kind of concept stuff. But um, yeah, the stuff I grab towards is like the Cronenberg things, the Brood. I love uh, the uh, the thing. It's amazing stuff. I've been really like uh, since the last few years, I've been watching a lot of like stuff in the '80s and just kind of uh, getting back to that stuff. Um, uh, if you go on YouTube, you can still get uh, the full copy of Dead Alive. It's under, and it's. I, I recommend that to anybody. If you want to watch one of the best zombie movies ever made, it's uh, Dead Alive. And it's and it's it's it, it just keep in mind that's the guy who who directed Lord of the Rings and everything else. And so like Peter Jackson. Peter Jackson. Yeah, it's amazing. I don't know if it's for everybody. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. If you like kids, I mean, you know, it has everything. It has kids. It has love. It has just romance, for the kids. Has, it has it has lawnmowers. You know. And I'll say this too, it might be the most bloodiest movie I've ever seen. Possibly. Right? <laughs> yeah. Never know. Yeah. Could I, just before we go, go to Ron, I just want yep. to mention one thing. Uh, so this is Becca Kinsey's piece up on the wall, uh, Becca right here. And um, like I said, we had a, a 3D artist who came in and tried to re recreate these pieces. This one was a super challenge, because as you can see, there's sort of a lot going on in this in this painting. Uh, where we have, uh, Dra you can probably talk about it better than I can, but we have Dracula, uh, and then we have Mina, and basically you sort, you sort of see the the anguish that she's feeling as she's being uh, bitten by Dracula. So uh, I think she she uh, absolutely knocked it out of the park how she was able to represent that in a 3D print or a 3D uh, sculpture. So again, that's an example of one of the ones that are available. Very cool. So Ron, you are they say Martin said you are the expert when it comes to horror. You and another gentleman. So for you, what's your earliest memory of falling in love with the genre that made you attach to it enough to want to create it? I'm not sure. I mean, I remember uh, Invaders from Mars, the original film from the 1950s, uh, really quite scared me when I was a kid and uh, saw it on TV. Uh, but over the years, I, mean, it's been, I, I guess my favorite horror stuff really is movies in general uh, because so much of Horror is suspense and anticipation and then sudden bursts happening, and that's really hard to convey in comics, I think, but successfully, so I think it works best in movies. Amongst my favorite films are, I mean, Slither, uh, Night of the Creeps, and of course, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Massacre the original. Uh, I really, I watch all kinds. I mean, I like, I like dumb 1950 giant monster movies, you know, on one hand, which are kind of ridiculous, and on the other hand, I just watched the other night the, uh, the miniseries uh, Midnight Mass, uh, which of course is uh, kind of disturbing to watch. So, from one, one extreme to the other. Awesome. So, Martin. 
Yes, sir. Why don't you tell <laughs> us a little bit of the stretch goals that people can get with this uh, Kickstarter that you got? Because it's very diverse, and I think it, it appeals to so many people's different tastes on how they like to take in media. Yeah, so um, we do have a few script stretch goals planned out. I don't want to give all those away because we have to see when we, when we hit those stretch goals. But, That's right. Um, but in terms of the actual... Uh, items that you get with with the project like I said we have uh, <laughs> sorry we have uh, two sculptures the one we saw previously this is actually Sam Agro's piece and the sculpture that was done after Sam Agro is here today uh, as well so you can talk to him about that um, and uh, Mr. S uh, Sam Noir is right at the front he's gonna, he's gonna start passing out some of the uh, flyers there's there's actually some of the pieces that are in this uh, in this book and, uh, and we'll, you can get them signed today if you want. So as a part of this thing, we have the, the regular version. Sorry? Oh, they're already passed out. All right, great, thank you. You're way ahead of me. <laughs> All right, so um, you can get the hardcover, as I said, because it's something I definitely want to do. I, lo I look personally love hardcover books. Uh, you have the soft cover book, you have um, we have the statues. Uh, we do have something really cool coming. Uh, you know what, I'll let you know anyway. We have some really cool uh, pins that are coming um, for a stretch goal. So once we hit that, we will release that. Uh, we have uh, sets of mini prints. So if you want to put some of these things on your wall, get some of the artists to, uh, to sign them, we have those as well. Uh, we have t-shirts. We have t-shirts. So um, show this t-shirt mark. Yeah. Let's be right. the model. I'm model it. All right. There you go. <laughs> All right. So, um, so the t-shirt itself is uh, by um, Katie Sawatsky. And uh, one of the amazing things that I found when we were putting this together is we had a lot of banter between all of the different artists. So, um, you know, just helping and encouraging each other and a bit of one-upmanship, I, uh, one I would say. Um, but at one point, Katie uh, created this piece, and everybody just, you know, their, their jaws just dropped and said, and Eric came up and said, hey, you know, that would look great on a t-shirt. And, uh, and he was right. And I said, you know what? Absolutely. Let's, let's make it available. So t-shirts available uh, to get this piece on it, and they are quality t-shirts. They're silk screen t-shirts, so every color is done individually on a silk screen, old school style. Um, but yeah, they'll be available as well. So there you go, guys. You've got a funded Kickstarter book. Definitely worth your while if you're a fan of the horror genre, genre specifically Dracula. Superstar artists featured in the book. You've got all kinds of swag when you want to upgrade your, your package. T-shirts. You've got statues. You've got... What else you got, Mark? Tell us, tell us everything we get. Option-wise. Soft cover, hard cover, PDF. Yeah, you got your PDF, uh, you got your um, your prints. Like I said, we actually got two two sets of prints now. Uh, so if you want to get them all, uh, you got you get your six prints, uh, regular prints, and then we have what's called the mature set. So we have a, a, a mature set of prints that you could also pick up, which will be items in the in the um, um, in the book or illustrations in the book. Um, and we also, like I said, we have so many. Um, <laughs> We have so many plans for stretch goals. Uh, I will say we're looking at another cover for a stretch goal right now. I won't say what it is yet, but we do have another cover coming in, as well as uh, some additional prints and, and things like that. Oh, one very important thing I wanted to show. Um, we did a, li a limited amount of these special collector's coins. Okay. So these collector's coins, they're... Uh, they're about two inches. I actually have one here. Um, I'll show it in a sec. And uh, I ran off about uh, 200 of them max, so that's the only things we're going to have. And those will only be, able, be available on the Kickstarter uh, at some of the specific levels. And uh, we're doing a few giveaways as well, just as promotional stuff. But they're, they just came out incredible. And on one side, the head side, it's actually Sam Agro's, um, uh, Sam Agro's art. And on the tail side, it's uh, Gerhardt's uh, castle oh, on the cool. back. Yeah, and it's it's a solid metal piece. So, anybody's interested in checking it out, I actually have one with me here. Very cool. Do any of you folks in the audience have questions for Mark or any of the artists? Sam, take it away.
So his question was, where in Artist Alley can they get their print signed? Yeah, so we have a, a few of the folks that read. Um, the, the four prints that we have, uh, one is Mecca Kinsey, so you can go right down to check hers out. Uh, Mike Ruth, so you can see the Mike Ruth piece that is currently up on the left side here. So uh, we have one of those, so Mike Ruth is right on the end here. Uh, Casey Parsons, the one right next to it on the right, uh, who did an amazing painting there, really creepy. Um, his is also available. And then we have uh, Sam Agro's piece as well. So you get, you get them all signed by those uh, artists. Very cool. So before we wrap up the artists uh, here, I'd like, if you guys have any books you'd like to promote or let people know what they can find at your tables, uh, go for it. Um, yesterday, well, I had um, my award-winning book, Gehenna Death Valley. Um, unfortunately, well, fortunately and unfortunately, it sold out yesterday, but I have co uh, my new comic, a preview of my new comic, The Beholden, that I co-wrote with Bob Sally, and it's a supernatural meets Die Hard, so check it out when you can. Oh, um, my table is P6. There you go, P6, check out Be Becca Kenzie. And for you, Jonathan? Uh, okay, so... Um, my book is called uh, The Fly Trap. Uh, I said earlier, it's uh, it's, a, it's a Lovecraftian uh, meets Saturday morning cartoon horror. Um, you can find me beside Becca at PO5. Uh, Comic book comes with a free print as well. PO6, PO5, very easy. And for you, Ron, what can people find at your table? I'm at uh, P15, Ron Sutton. Um, most of what I've got at my table is the, the strip that I'm working on right now, I'm drawing a weekly Edgar Rice Burroughs comic strip based on Carson and Venus, it's on my t-shirt. Uh, and, uh, and I also have been drawing the Man Eaters, list, which is also an adaptation of Edgar Rice Burroughs' book. So there's original art from that. Uh, I've got a bunch of my comics, a bunch of my graphic novels. Maybe most notably, uh, I've got copies of Lucifer's Sword, which is a graphic novel uh, written by a guy named Phil Cross, who is a member of the Hells Angels for the past 50 years. He's one of the original guys uh, out in California with Sonny Barger in the early 70s. And it's basically his, with the names changed, it's his autobiography of how uh, he joined the Hells Angels. And so the two of us worked on that. And I've got copies of the graphic novel there, as well as some of my horror stuff, and Elvira prints, and lots of other stuff. So come see me. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you guys. I think our time is up, but you got the coin that you want to show, right? And some of and the giveaways. Yes, we got giveaways, guys. Before we wrap up, we're gonna take care of these giveaways. I don't show. We've got the coin here, the special edition coin you can get with the Kickstarter. One of the packages. It's hefty, you can make that a medallion. Maybe you gotta bring it closer to the camera or to the the shine is too much. Okay, so we have the three pieces, as I mentioned, uh, by Dominic Chenier. Uh, so again, these are all sort of works in progress towards his final piece. Uh, so you can see that they're all, all uh, painted uh, by Dominic. So one, we have this one here as well. And we have this one here. That's amazing. Yeah, very nice. So three people will be going home with those today. So what do they have to do again for the giveaway? Uh, let's, let's do a show of hands. Uh, who here has actually backed Dracula Vision so far? So we got the two here right now. Three. <laughs> this is a piece. Do you feel? Yes, no. All right, so what are we going to do? How do you want to do it? Do you want to maybe right. give some of these pieces away? I'll tell you what. The folks, the folks that, uh, that already backed, uh, you're going to get first dibs. Okay, and then we'll and then, and then we'll, we'll give away another. We'll okay. give some other ones away. All okay, right. all right. So we got um, the two folks that, that backed. Uh, just come up here and uh, let me know which ones you want, including the pieces that are being drawn right now. Jonathan, are you done? Yeah. Huh? He's not done yet. Oh, he's not done yet. Okay, but it will be pretty awesome. So you guys can also pick the ones that are in progress. Yes. We. Okay, yeah. So you can choose any one of those. Can I throw yours up onto the uh, projector so people can see what it is yeah. you've been working on while you've been out of here? Yeah. Huh? I'm 
So here's what Jonathan's been working on while he's been up here and we've been chatting. Dracula. Dracula Batman. Batman. <laughs> Pretty bad. Stein and Dracula Batman. Rebecca, can we show what you've been working on? There you go. Alright, a really creepy piece here. What goes through your head? <laughs> I, to answer your question, it just entered my head. I also think sitting next to Jonathan, I just realized it's looking like the cover of the fly trap has like the head. I think that probably crept in there, so. Oops. <laughs> Okay, so we got three pieces up we got for three okay. pieces up for you guys, whether you back the book or not. And this might be a good way to encourage them to back the book because you see the stuff that's go. gonna be in it. Alright, so, so how do you wanna do it? We the number do picking? Like it, number picking like last time I think is the best way to go. Alright, let's All right, do it. So I'm gonna pick a number. Trivia. You wanna trivia. do trip he's saying trivia. You got a trivia question? Uh, I don't have the prep. Okay, how about this? Can, can you guys name one person? Who's going to be featured in the book that we've discussed so far? Has anybody been listening? Some of those artists are here, some of them are on the table. No one's been listening to me. <laughs> Can I double dip? All right, you want to do the pick a number? Let's do pick a number. All right, guys, these pieces are pretty nice. Alright folks, it's very, very simple. All you gotta do is put your hand up and pick a number. So whoever wants one of these original art pieces, alright, little buddy in the front. What number did you say? No, not three. Seven. No, not seven. Yes. It's one out of ten, so you can think smaller than that. Say that again. No, not four. Yes. No, not eight. Yes. Someone said seven. Try again. You got it. So you get to pick one of these three. You got Dracula, Batman. Becca, I'm not sure what the name of your character is. She's just making up an original character. And then you got this other Dracula piece. So you get first dibs. So for the second, for the second number? Yeah. Let me know. All right, folks, another picture of you in the hoodie. You got it. Very good. He was watching. Maybe I said it in the mic and they heard it. All right, we got one more. Get the comp. So you got Dracula Batman, which is not finished yet. You got Becca's original, original piece, and then this Morning in the morning with no coffee. And then you got, you like that one? It's yours. How about you? Which one would you like? You got these two to pick between. You want the Batman? Alright. We got one more piece, guys. We gotta pick a number, though. You can pick a number. Martin, you got another number to pick? Okay. No, not nine. No, not two. Not five. Not four. Is that nine? Not nine. Uh, I'll start again with you. Did you say one? Six, not six. Not three. I'm trying to see if I can pick someone who hasn't had a chance yet. Yes, Batman mask. Number one, you're the one. That is the one. Good job. That's for Rebecca. Rebecca, are you finished yours? All right. Thank you guys for hanging out with us, whether you were listening or not. I hope you guys check out the Dracula Visions because it's going to be a beautiful book. I've seen a lot of what's in it. Be sure to check it out on Kickstarter. Martin, thank you guys. Thank you, Eric. Thanks a lot.
Rebecca, thank you. Jonathan, great job. Ron, everyone go and check out their tables, guys, and see what they got for you. Have fun and be safe.